Hello and welcome to ChemCan. I'm Mrs. Newman and in this video we're going to discuss wavelength, frequency, energy, and how exactly the three are related to each other. So let's learn a little chemistry. First and foremost, the electromagnetic spectrum actually organizes all the different types of electromagnetic radiation according to wavelength, where wavelength is actually the distance or length between two consecutive crests or troughs in a particular wave. So if we consider our diagram here and we go from the first full crest to the second full crest in that wave, that would be one wavelength where wavelength is actually represented by the Greek letter lambda and looks like an upside down Y. Now, if you notice, the electromagnetic spectrum starts with radio waves or your longest wavelength and works its way through microwaves, your visible spectrum, ultraviolet, all the way up to your gamma rays, which are your shortest wavelength. Now, any wavelength can be related to a frequency, where frequency measures how frequently a wave or a crest or a trough of the wave passes a particular point. So, when you have a longer wavelength, then you have a lower frequency. Where frequency is represented by the Greek letter nu and looks like a fancy V. And vice versa, at the other end with those gamma rays that have that real short wavelength, they are associated with a real high frequency. Not only that, but wavelength and frequency are actually related to each other through the speed of light. So there's a very important equation where you have the speed of light, C, equals your lambda times nu, frequency times wavelength. Now if you recall, your speed of light is a constant which equals 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. This equation helps represent the fact that your wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional because as one goes up, the other goes down. Not only this, but we can actually relate a frequency to energy using a second equation where E energy is going to equal your Planck's constant H times nu, your frequency. Where Planck's constant actually equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per second. Now here, since the E and the nu, the frequency, are on opposite sides of the equation, your energy is actually directly proportional to your frequency. So if you have a low frequency, then that's going to correspond to a type of radiation with a lower energy and vice versa. The higher the frequency, the higher the energy that's going to be associated with that particular type of radiation. So for example, you can jump into your car and turn on the radio and listen to your favorite music without having to wear any sort of protection. However, if you go to the dentist and need to get x-rays of your teeth, they're going to put a lead blanket on you to protect your other organs from the radiation of an x-ray. And that's not to mention the fact that the gamma rays are what supposedly turn the Hulk into the Hulk. So you really got to watch out for those. Now let's see how these equations actually apply to a problem. 
So the problem begins by stating that red light with a wavelength of 670.8 nanometers is emitted when lithium is heated in a flame. So this problem actually refers to the classic chemistry experiment known as the flame test, where a source of lithium ions would be placed most likely in a Bunsen burner flame and that flame would provide one of the electrons in that lithium cation with some energy. That electron would become excited and jump up to a higher energy level. In order to relax or fall back down to its initial energy level, that electron's going to have to emit the energy it had absorbed to transition up. When it does so, we see a photon of light released that corresponds to a particular wavelength. In this case, lithium produces a red magenta pink color that corresponds to the wavelength given in this particular problem. In part A, they say what is the frequency of this radiation? So what that tells me is I'll be looking for new or frequency. Now since I've got wavelength and frequency here, then I know I'm going to work with my speed of light equation. So C equals lambda nu. Now there's one slight issue here though. The speed of light is in meters per second, while the wavelength they gave us is in nanometers. So we have to start with a metric conversion. So we're going to take the 670.8 nanometers and convert that to meters. So if I set up some dimensional analysis, I'm going to carry the nanometers to the bottom of my ratio, and I can directly relate nanometers to the base unit meters, where for every one meter, I have one times 10 to the ninth nanometers. If you need help remembering that, just think nano 9, nano 9, nano 9, because the nano means 9. So 1 times 10 to the 9th nanometers for every 1 meter, which means I'm going to have 6.708 times 10 to the negative 7th meters in this wavelength. And then I should be set to rearrange my formula to solve for the frequency. So I'm actually going to take my equation and divide both sides by lambda. This will cancel my lambda and help me solve for the frequency. So I know nu is going to equal the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by the 6.708 times 10 to negative 7th meters. If I carefully plug this in my calculator, I get 4.4692 times 10 to the 14th. Now, in terms of sig figs, the speed of light is a constant, so it's said to have infinite sig figs. So the only sig figs that matter are the ones in the wavelength measurement. So I've got four sig figs in that wavelength because the six, seven, zero, and eight are all significant. So I can have four sig figs in my answer. So I'm going to round this to 4.469 times 10 to the 14th and you need a unit. So here, my meters cancel and I'm left with one over a second, or s to the negative first. This unit is also what's called a Hertz. So sometimes you'll see capital H, lowercase z, for that particular unit. Let's take a look at part b. In part B, they want us to determine the energy that's associated with this radiation per photon. So since they want us to figure out the energy now, 
That indicates to me that we now need to pull the equation involving energy. So we're going to work with E equals Planck's constant times your frequency. So we're going to plug in the 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules per second and we're going to multiply that by the frequency we solved for in part A. So the 4.469 times 10 to the 14th seconds to the negative 1 gives us an answer of 2.9614 one one times 10 to the negative 19. Now again, we should consider sig figs here. And again, that Planck's constant is a constant, so it has infinite sig figs. So really, the frequency here is going to dictate sig figs. And since it has four sig figs, we can have four sig figs in our answer. So we're going to round to 2.961 times 10 to the negative 19. And our unit this time is going to be a little bit different. Our seconds both cancel and we're left with joules, which is an appropriate energy unit. Now since the frequency corresponds to one photon, this is actually joules per one photon. Just like the problem asks for. Final part, part C. Let's take a look. Here in part C, they want to know per mole of photons. So if you recall in part B, we just calculated the energy in terms of joules per one photon. Now they want to know the energy in terms of joules per mole of photons. So here we're going to have to work on converting some units and we're going to start with our answer from part B. We're going to pull down the 2.961 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per photon and we're going to wind up converting that to joules per mole of photons. Now here we don't have to worry about the top unit in either of these units because it's going to remain joules but we do have to convert that bottom unit and when you're working with dimensional analysis and converting a bottom unit you're going to bring that unit to the top. So since I have photon on the bottom of the unit I'm trying to get rid of it I'm going to put photon on top of my ratio. And then from a count of photons, I can go to a mole of photons. Using Avogadro's number. Because if you recall, one mole of anything is going to equal 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of that anything. So here, we're going to have one mole of photons. And for every one mole of photons, we'll have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd photons. Plugging this into my calculator very carefully gives me 1.7831 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole of photons. Now once again we do have to worry about sig figs, but with your conversion factors, like Avogadro's number, it's also said to have infinite sig figs. So we can have, one last time, just four sig figs in our answer here. So our final answer will be 1.783 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole of photons.
I hope this helps you with these types of calculations. Continue to follow along for more chemistry content. Be well.